Moshe 14.2, 14.3. Being in Betanya, in the plain of Shimon, Simon, the jar merchant. Let's not go there now. He couldn't have been a leper because Yeshua would have been ceremoniously defiled. The leper, if you read your notes, you'll see note number three, page 841. The Hebrew word leper, gavara, is jar merchant. And in Aramaic, the word is garava. Okay? But the, those who translated the New Testament from Aramaic to Greek mistranslated this word as the as the Hebrew word leper, garava, as opposed to a jar merchant. If Yeshua was in the house of a leper, he would have been ceremoniously defiled and he couldn't have been the Moshiach. He would have sinned and been unclean. Not Simon the leper, okay? Simon the jar maker, the jar merchant. Yeshua sat at dinner, and there came a woman having an alabaster flask of ointment, pistachio, very precious. Good. Now jump down to verse number 10. And Yahuda from Kiryot, not Judas Iscariot, no, Iscariot was not his last name, Yahuda from the city of Iscariot, Miriam from the city of Magdala, not Mary Magdalene, Miriam, Yeshua of Nazareth, not Jesus Nazareth, Yeshua from Nazareth. Very good. Now go to verse 10. Yehuda from Kiryot, Judas, one of the twelve, went to the Kohanim, the head Kohanim, to betray Yeshua. Now, in the natural, in the Pashat, this means what? Very little. What does this have to do with trees? But in the Remez, listen, Bet Anya in Aramaic and Hebrew means what? You should have, those of you who have heard this before, you should know this. What does Bet Anya mean in Hebrew and Aramaic? The house of huh? figs. Write it down. There you go. Thank you. Theo was paying attention a few months ago. The house of figs. That's why it's not Bet, you know, Beth Peggy. It's Bet. Not Bethany, but Beth Anya, the house of figs. Notice when Judas, Yehuda, went to betray Yeshua, he left Beth Anya, or the house of figs. Doesn't it say that there in verse 10? Mo Yochanan Moshe 14 10? Hello? Yehuda, Judas, went from there to the head Kohanim to betray Yeshua for 30 pieces of silver. Then, after this, go with me to Luke, Luca 13. Luca 13 and verse 6. Luca, Luke 13, 6. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Amen. He spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. He came, the master came and saw fruit from it and found none. Then he said to the dresser of the vineyard, See, these three years I seek fruit from this fig age. I found none. Cut it down. Why should the ground be wasted? He answering into him said, Master, leave it alone. I will dig around it, cast manure. If it bears fruit, fine. After that, cut it down. Okay? And elsewhere, in the other Gospels, what did Yeshua do to the fig tree? When Yeshua saw the fig tree, he was hungry and it had no fruit. What did Yeshua do? Huh? You sure now? Now, the church has taught us what? The so called church. And so I said, the Jews are under a curse. The Jews are under a curse. Because the law, the law, who, who, the law, yo, mm -hmm. him. The law cursed the Jews. He cursed the fig tree, and the fig tree is a symbol of the Jews. Right? That's what you've been taught, some of us, right? Wrong. Wrong. Where did Judas? leave from to betray the master? 
house of fig. When Yeshua cursed the fig tree, he was cursing Judas for betraying him out from the house of figs. And all like Judas in Israel, who would betray the king of Israel for the last 2,000 years, a curse has been upon them. And the curse of unbelief and the curse of damnation. That's what cursing the fig tree was all about. It was symbolic of cursing those like Yehuda who would reject him as Melech, King, and Moshiach of their lives. He wasn't cursing the Jews, and he wasn't cursing the Ephraimites. He was cursing the one who had left the house of figs, and Yeshua said, well, I'm going to curse the fig tree to show you that those like Yehuda in the house of figs are under a curse for rejecting my love and my, my kingship and my mission on earth. Make sense? Uh -huh. Now listen, don't miss this now. You like this? The toe? Yes. By fulfilling the mitzvah, listen, of Orla, what's Orla? Planting trees in Israel. We are healing the land and we are healing in faith those who are under the curse of the fig tree of unbelief in both houses of Israel. I'll let you think about that while I sip some more. Every time we fulfill the mitzvah of Orla, we plant a tree, we are preparing the land, and we are removing the curse of the fig tree upon those among both houses who, like Yehuda from Ishkariot, have betrayed the Moshiach and the Brit It's an act of faith. It's an act of emunah. To say the Jews and the people of Israel are in the Galut. They're in the exile. Why? Because they rejected the king by saying, we have no king. But Kaiser. Yeshua said, you will not eat the fruit of the land. You will eat the bread of oppression in all the nations in the Galut. But by fulfilling the mitzvah of Olah, we declare that we are of a different spirit. That we are of the spirit of Yehoshua and Kalev because we are of the spirit that doesn't speak Lashon Hara against the land because it is the new Yerushalayim. It is the future Gan Eden. It is the future home and place and dwelling of both houses of Israel. Listen, brothers and sisters, get this in your kishki. Every time you plant what well, seems like a benign tree, just a tree. I mean, I, I can go to Home Depot and put three trees in my backyard. But you're not turning the land from desolation into a land flowing with the milk and honey. The only time you could prepare a land and turn it into milk and honey is if you take that Home Depot tree and send it to Israel and planned it as an act of faith. Yeshua cursed Judas, but, but to portray that curse, what did he do? Symbolically, he cursed the fig tree. We may not be able to go home today yet, but we can symbolically reverse that curse upon all the unbelief of the Judases in both houses of Israel by preparing and dressing the garden like our fathers used to dress it. I like this. I think I'm going to listen to this tape when I get home. Selah. And you thought it was just one of those things that we couldn't do anymore. 
Yeshua said not one yud or nikuda will pass away until the heavens and the earth pass away. If the heavens and the earth haven't passed away, this can be fulfilled. This mitzvah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Turn with me to Yeshayahu. It's going to be led by the Ruach. Turn with me to Yeshayahu. A fourteen. Yeshayahu. Eight fourteen. Isaiah eight fourteen. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. And he, talking about the Moshiach, the Messiah, will become a place of refuge, but also a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel. The Mashiach, Yahweh's place of refuge, because of the curse of betrayal and unbelief, the one who should be the place of refuge will turn into a stone of stumbling and blindness for those poor blind Jews. Is that what it says? No. It says both houses will stumble over the stumbling stone that should have been the place of refuge. What does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means that the Jews, in large measure, still reject Yeshua. And you Ephraimites who are returning from the nations, many of the Ephraimites still can't see the relevancy of Torah in their lives and the fact that they are the ten tribes who were lost and now by the blood of Yeshua are found and now by the blood of Yeshua are returning home. So when I tell you you're an Israelite equal to any Jew, you're like, well, now that I'm, now that I'm saved, should I convert to Judaism? If you're asking that, you haven't understood a word I've been teaching for 20 years. For the last 10 years, I should say. If you're an Ephraimite, that means you have been removed from that stumbling block because Yeshua was a stumbling block. You couldn't see how the Messiah had come to bring you home to Israel, not turn you into a pork-eating Sunday Baptist. Uh-huh. And when I tell you you're an Israelite, you're, yeah, whatever. Well, I'm, I'm not Jewish. Yeah, but uh, I don't know if my parents... You don't get this. If you are in Moshiach, Galutia 328, then you are Moshiach and you are Abraham's Zerah, his sperm, according to the promise that the blessings of Yahweh might come upon the nations through Moshiach Yeshua, Galutia 313. That the blessing of Allah Abraham would come upon the nations. You are an Israelite if you're born again, washed in the blood of Yeshua, and you're willing not to replace the Jews of Israel, but live and learn from the Jews and become one at the table of Chaburah and brotherhood. You are Israel. So why would you try to convert and become Israel when you already are Israel? But when you tell this to Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterians and Calvary Chapelists, it's like, hey, brother, don't you be that. Are you trying to make me into a Jew? No, I'm trying to tell you. Yeshua said, I have only come from Moshe for the house of Israel. Yes. Luke 19.10, the son of man, Ben-Adam, has come to seek and to save that which was lost. By definition, in order to be lost, you once had to belong to him. Uh -huh. Amen. You, if you are not Jewish and you love Yeshua, you as prophesied in scripture in hundreds of places, not one place, hundreds of places are the ten lost tribes. Amen. Welcome home. We've been waiting for you. Hallelujah. We love you. We want to teach you. We care about you. We'll work with you. We'll nurture you. Welcome back. Welcome back. We've been waiting for you. You don't have to become Jewish and you can still be Israel. Amen. Twelve tribes. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. So, brothers and sisters, symbolically, when we perform the mitzvah of Orla, you know what we're saying? Yeah, I'm an Ephraimite. My parents, one, my, some of my parents come through Slovakia. Others come from Poland. Some of your parents may come from Mexico, Honduras, Guatemala. But that's where we were wandering. That was not our home. And to prove that I believe what I, what I speak, I'm going to call the Jewish National Fund or the United Jewish Appeal or some agency and I'm going to plant me some trees so I can fulfill the mitzvah because five years from now, I may be home. Amen. Or if I'm not home, maybe my children or my grandchildren will be home. It's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. 
Baruch Hashem. Luke got 21, 29. And every time we plant a tree, brothers and sisters, we are in, on an individual basis reversing the curse of the fig tree. I want you to go home tonight. Don't go home now, please. And <laughs> no problem. And I want you to think about that. You can reverse the curse of the exile symbolically by planting trees and fulfilling the eternal Torah of Ola. Did Yeshua have to curse the fig tree? Wasn't Yehuda already cursed? But he did it to show others that the exile was going to begin in, in his fullness. That Judah was going to join Ephraim in the exile. I want you to notice this. Go to Luca 21, 29. Does anyone join? Amen. Amen. Other than Darrell, does anyone enjoy? Amen. Luca 29, 29. He spoke to them a parable. What is a parable? Very good. An earthly story with a deep spiritual meaning. Amen. See the fig gates, the fig tree, fig gates, and all the eight seen. Amen. <laughs> see, so today I want you to see not just the fig gates, but I want you to see all the eight seen. When they already budded, you see and know for yourself what summer is now near at hand. Verse 31. So likewise, when you see these things, meaning the, the fig tree and all the other trees, when you see these things come to pass, know, know that the Mahud of Yahweh is near at hand. Look at me. The church says, oh, since the Jews were cursed, the fig tree, once the fig tree starts blossoming, now ready? One, two, three. May 14, 1948. Right? Isn't that what you've been taught? Don't look at me that holy. Isn't that what you've been That's what we've been taught. The fig tree started blossoming when the Jews returned to the land in May 14, right? Yeah. This is not what it's talking about. Remember the principle Yeshua never spoke anything but Torah. Whatever came out of Yeshua's mouth was what? Amen. Torah. Torah. It may have been presented in a more palatable fashion, and a more easy to understand fashion, and a more easy to consume. But he never taught anything that was not Torah. Amen. Amen? Amen. How many believe he never taught anything that wasn't Torah? Amen. Baruch Hashem Yom. Baruch Hashem Yom. See the fig eights. And all the eight scenes. Now look at this. When they have already got in, you'll know summer is near. Notice. And all these things will come to pass. The whole Bible, Genesis to Revelation. This generation, what generation? This generation. What generation? This generation. This generation shall not pass away until all be fulfilled. I'm going to give you a little second. See if, see if, if, if you can come up with what Yeshua was talking about. Hello? He was saying when the people of Israel, Judah and Ephraim, begin to fulfill the, <laughs> the eternal Torah of Orla by decorating and dressing the land, that generation is doing so because they realize the exile is almost over. The Moshiach is about to return. They're preparing their future home as any bride or any woman would do. So the generation. Hello. The generation that begins to what? To plant in the land. What? Plant what? Not just fig trees but all kind of trees. Are you getting this? What generation? The generation that sees that they are Israel and that by planting in the land of Israel, not just fig trees to reverse the curse symbolically to say we left in unbelief, we're coming back in Emunah. Hello, somebody. 
Amen. We left in unbelief. We're coming back in emunah. We left rejecting Moshiach. We're coming back by accepting Moshiach. We left confused, bewildered, dazed and confused. We're returning with faith, hope, confidence to the end of the game. Amen. Hallelujah. And so now we see the fig tree and all the trees that Yahweh is calling us to plant in the land of Israel. Wow. Wow. That generation that grabs a hold, because who's going to plant trees in the land of Israel? Israelites. You think you think the Arabs are going to decorate our future home? Yeah, they want to decorate it with our blood. You think the honorable Kofi, Kofi Annan, the UN Secretary General Kofi Annan will decorate the land of Israel for the future of our people. Oh. You think you, 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 you think Kofi Annan is going to do that? Who do you think is going to prepare the new universal line? We are, but you got to wake up, and then you'll you'll prepare not just fig trees, but all kinds of trees. Because you're declaring not only that you and your children will return, you're declaring that I came from a family of wandering lost sheep of Israel, but I was lost, now I'm found. I was spiritually blind, now I see somebody. Amen. Planting trees is a declaration of your blood-washed, regenerated, born-again soul, nefesh, and the fact that that, that body will have a new physical resurrected body, which will need a hole. And what we left in unbelief and doubt and fear will come back with joy. Amen. Does this make any sense? Amen. So the fig tree and all the trees, what is Yeshua sure talking about? Go down to verse 32. Luke 21, 32. Verily, what does it say in Aramaic? In the next edition, you have it fixed. Amen, I say to you. Amen, amen. Amen, I say to you. This generation will not pass away. What generation? The generation that starts planting the trees, the, the eternal Torah of Orla. That starts for, did, did anybody ever tell you you should perform this mitzvah of Orla? Did anybody ever tell you that? No. Oh, you know, I don't want to become too Jewish. I don't want to be, you know, they plant trees, that's their business. It's not about planting trees, it's about, the, it's about, it's about planting a stake and roots in your home in the freedom future. Anybody with the wisdom, the chokhmah of Yahweh, plans for their future, prepares for their future, prepares for their retirement. If you're not preparing for your retirement, you are not...